Right now in the world, the most popular browser with which people use on the internet is Google's Chrome, and this week it turned 10. And I thought it sparked an interesting conversation about the role of browsers. Increasingly, the way we interact with the internet is on apps, on mobile. So what is the role of an internet browser in this day and age, and how is it going to change in the future? To debate that, we have Ariel Bogle, who writes back technology all across the ABC, and Seamus Byrne, who also writes about technology all across everywhere. Seamus, when Chrome launched, was it particularly groundbreaking in terms of the other competition that was around? Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I think one of the biggest aspects was that the existing browsers at the time, which was mostly Internet Explorer and Firefox as sort of the competing options, neither of them were actually doing a particularly good job of really clearly adhering to the web standards that were really sort of coming. And they had been around for a couple of years. It wasn't like they hadn't had time to uh, to do things right. There were a couple of these kind of test websites that you could go to that, that pushed the sort of standards to the limit, used all the kind of latest tagging information. And these were known as the acid tests. And Chrome was the first browser to come out that perfectly was able to pass these tests and was all about that idea of saying, let's stick to a good job of delivering the web standards. And then probably the second part was that, you know, at that time, lots of websites could crash your browser because of weird scripting codes and things. But if one tab crashed your browser, the whole the whole browser would die and mm. you'd lose every tab you had open and everyone was like, oh my God, oh my, I lost everything. Um, and Chrome came up with this sandboxing system so that if something crashed, only that tab would crash. You could just kill that tab and then everything else would, would be able to, to get on with doing the job. And now we're at a stage where Chrome is, I mean, it dominates the primary way most people browse the web. I think they have 60% of the browser market share. It's huge. Part of its success I would imagine is linked to the fact that it's part of an ecosystem of, of Google services that have become quite ubiquitous. And I would just mention a recent decision in the European Union, a competition decision. The uh, EU Competition Commission over there fined Google for anti-competitive behaviour in a way, saying that in its Android operating system that you might find on a Samsung phone or Google's own Pixel phone, for favouring its own search, mm. um, making sure that people were kept in the ecosystem and what Google has been really clever in is keeping people in that ecosystem, creating a circular platform. You use Google, you use, you use Gmail, you use Drive, you use Chrome. Now you can store your passwords in Chrome. You can store your credit card details so you can easily shop with one click. Yeah. It's a really complete ecosystem. One thing that Chrome has done and done usefully and well and importantly is really increasing the conversation around web security. Mm. So a lot of the web you know, still operates on unencrypted um, connections. So when you visit a website and it just says HTTP in the corner of the URL, that connection is unencrypted. So it could be um, hacked in some way or your information could be sort of siphoned out. Yeah, if you're typing just details in, it's it's not being encoded in some way. Yeah, protected, through. sort of run through a little tunnel and protected. Google has been and Chrome has been really important in pushing people towards HTTPS, which is the more secured way of connecting to a website. And what they did, which was interesting, and I think a lot of people who ran unsecured websites hated, was now when you visit the website, it will just say secure or insecure in the top of a Chrome browser. Mm. And that is a really important indicator and a really easy way for people to know if they're you know, increasing their security online. Before, you would just have to be in the know to keep yourself safe and know about that type of thing. So I think that has been a really important move as well. Mm. As you look at Chrome as it sits now, and I've got... 12 Chrome windows out open in front of me right now as I, as I talk. What would you change about it as a, as a system at the moment? Well, actually, I read a really interesting piece this morning on Wired uh, to coincide with the decade anniversary of Chrome. And it was some people at Google who run Google Chrome talking about whether the URL is over. Mm. So one thing... They, they killed it in a way. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are looking at whether there are better ways to indicate whether a page is secure or where you're trying to navigate on the internet, a better way than doing it than the uniform research, uniform resource locator. <laughs> <laughs> um, Take me back to like year 10 yeah. computer classes there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a really interesting move that they're flagging there. And I think it will get a lot of flack, but I think 
there are better ways for people to be navigating and understanding the internet. So I really look forward to seeing what they propose there. The web is the platform now. It's not even when you think about Chrome specifically, but that, like how many other applications do most people ever open these days? Yeah, It's basically almost everything that you do on a computer will just happen in your browser, browser now. Yeah. Like it, it is an application platform and it, there is just such a kind of removal. You know, it means it's so much easier for people to switch between a Mac or a PC, uh, you know, or a Chromebook because it, you know, it can all be just synchronized through the web into whatever browser you choose. You know, every browser can now do that sort of synchronization of all the key places you go and tools you use. So it really is this sort of different era that we're now in, even compared to when, you know, Chrome launched 10 years ago. And that is such power to control... Uh, you know, which one we open and how it's then directing your attention. There is lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. We're also talking about how do you manage your relationship between kids, screen time, gaming, where does a parent fit into that and how do we change that conversation? That is in the podcast, which you can find right now on any good podcasting app. Also, if you happen to be near a computer, head along to the ABC News YouTube channel, find this video, unless you're already watching it on there, I know, very meta, and leave a comment. Now, the reason I want you to leave a comment is because that is where we're taking your suggestions for topics that you want the show to cover. So, ABC News on YouTube, leave a comment for stuff that you want download the show to cover and we will do so. My name's Mark Fennell and we'll catch you next time.